Yo. Hey, DP. What's, what's going up? on? All is well, man. All is hey, well. Hey, man. It's always, it's always good to it's always good to have you have you join uh, our episode, man. How you doing today? Uh, pretty good. Long day, man. I'm actually out of town right now. Uh, I'm taking my son to college and you know get him all straight away as far as moving into the dorm room and everything. Okay. Well, look, man, I ain't going to take up all your time, but I appreciate you getting up on here today. And uh, for those of you who are now joining, this is Life After Sports Podcast. Uh, we have a special guest uh, with us tonight, Daryl Porter, a former NFL player and also defensive coordinator for uh, at American Heritage High School. And uh, I appreciate you being on here tonight, man. This is episode eight. And uh, also tonight, our theme tonight is talking about how learning from your mistakes has empowered you to help others. So with that being said, man, I appreciate you coming on this show tonight and uh, being able to give a little bit of tea, give some information, inspire our youth, which you do on a daily basis. And so I appreciate you taking the time again. Well, thanks a lot, so, man. man. Let's, talk about, <laughs> let's talk about your experience, man, like just your, your, your experience growing up here in South Florida. Uh, born and raised. For those who may not know your background. Huh? I, I said, said, for those who may not know your background. Oh, okay. I said, born and raised in Fort Lauderdale, man. Uh, grandfather was an icon. Uh, actually started Wayne Heisinger's business. Uh, Wayne Heisinger actually bought his first uh, garbage truck from my grandfather. So well-known in the community of Broward County. Uh, we are, you know, have our own road named after us. Uh, just to name a couple people, you know, uh, uh, Wilbur Porter, my great grandfather was a, a pioneer as far as, you know, coming from Atlanta, Georgia, and coming down and, and basically bohawk, bohawking, bohawking. Uh, those are things that, you know, the things that we're going through right now, they would be proud of what's going on as far as, you know, protesting and, and doing it the right way. Can you hear me? Yeah, I hear you hear me. Okay. Yeah, I hear you now. I hear you now. It's good. I hear you fine. But yeah, so yeah, no, no, I, I heard you clear now. So man, let's talk about the and I, I know you've been in coaching for well over 18 years, but I wanted to get your to get your experience in regards to like how that football is such a dynamic down here in South Florida. And why is that? I think it's 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 more of our kids being able to play year round now. You know, back in the day we weren't we're, we didn't have the the YouTube and the, the things of of the nature of of social media. Um, but the athletes that come out from down here and the guys that I've coached over the years, they are very very intelligent. One, you know, and, and it's not hard to teach when a kid's really good uh, playing football. Um, based on you seeing youth football here in South Florida, and you've been a part of that as well, um, what are some things that you think they can do to improve Little League football here in South Florida at a young age? Uh, really and, look, I'm going to ask you that because you're, you're experienced at this. Right. Uh, really and truly, I'm not a big fan of, of, of the kids with the concussion situation. You know, my son, you know, for an example, he, he's been playing since he was four years old. Uh, and that's something that, you know, I was I was blessed to let him be able to, you know, play at a young age and the game comes to him a lot slower as of now, you know, go, getting to the next level as far as going to college. You know, now the speed's going to be a little bit different, but, you know, the, the knowledge of the game, I think he's going to be ahead of uh, other players. Yeah. Okay. Um, let's talk about a little bit of your uh... – your, your high school experience at St. Thomas, St. Thomas High School. I said University, St. Thomas High School. Let's talk about your time at St. Thomas High School and, and what were some great experiences that you had there at the, uh, at, the, at the high school? Well, being an alumni at St. Thomas, a lot of people don't know it. You know, that school was put on the map, uh, you know, as far as our class, our 92 class, we were the first state championships. I actually played running back before I even ever played defense. I didn't play defense until I got to 
Boston College. But uh, we are known for the team that started the tradition over there. Um, and, you know, there's some good players that came out. I got a chance to coach James White, Giovanni Bernard, guys of that, that nature, you know. And, you know, I go to St. I, I come from St. Thomas and go to American Heritage and, and get a guy like Sony Michelle. So, you know, and Brian Burns, you know, there's, there's guys that are playing still in the National Football League, you know, uh, to be a part of that tradition and, and to say it was built from our legacy. You know, I know Michael went there, but, you know, your legacies are made out of winning championships. That's the way I would take it. Yeah. And, and talking about the building legacy and championships, let's talk about your experience at Boston College uh, while you were there. Uh, were there any challenges while you were there? I mean, you're going to talk about the experience at Boston College, but I want to know, you know, what were, did you face any challenges while you were a student athlete at that college? I, I didn't. I didn't face any challenges as far as you know anything of of, of negativity. Yeah. I think it was more of. I think going away from home and being from South Florida, never mm -hmm. seeing snow. You know, being a guy that you know left. You know, I could have went to Miami. I could have went to Florida. I, I went to Notre Dame, and I ended up at Boston College. You know, and and the best thing about this situation was I'd never played defensive back. You know, so I, I learned that side of the ball. And uh, the first day, Coach Tom Coughlin, uh, Super Bowl champion coach from the Giants, was my coach at Boston College. He basically told me, I have good news and I have bad news. The first day of, of, of camp, you know, coming in like my son is now, you know, you go out there and, and, and you just be an athlete. And I, I guess I did the drills as far as a, a defensive back because I was a running back coming out. They re they recruited me as a running back. As a running back, wow. Yeah, so I, I never played defense until I got to Boston College. And he was the guy that, that really changed my life and, and to the point made me uh, succeed as far as going on to the next level. Yeah. And just to take a step back, you know, before you made that decision to go to Boston College, what and you, you mentioned the other universities that were also runner-up. Why why did you choose Boston College in regards to all the, as University of Miami and the other schools as well? First and foremost, some of the things that, that I was looking at in colleges, and I, I speak to a lot of parents these days about this situation, um, they have to look at the graduation rate. Athletics is, is first and foremost. If you stump your toe, you better be able to fall back and have something to fall back on. And, you know, I actually committed to Notre Dame on my way home on a visit. And the guy that was on the visit with me, actually, he committed there on the visit. So I was stuck, per se. <laughs> you know, that was something that you, you, you don't want to happen to kids. And that's why with the kids having these offers and, and being offered by colleges, some of them are not real. And a lot of kids don't understand that. When I say it's not real, they can offer you all day. You can only go to one college. Yeah. No, that, and that makes sense. I think a lot of, I mean, and I know for our viewers, we have parents on here. We also have some uh, college athletes and pro um, that's also listening or tuning in. And I think that's important, you know, uh, especially with both of us engaging with our youth and being able to help them to make informed decisions. A lot of times they see the big name school, they see the uh, the glamour that comes with it, and they see other guys. And sometimes coaches are – they're not really recruiting you, but they're recruiting that other five-star athlete that's on your team, and they're going to say, hey, we'll do a deal and just bring you along, if you understand what I mean. I, I, I've been around a long time, like you said. It's been my 18th year, you know, and, and it's it's something that we try to instill into the parents. you got to trust the process. Yeah. And – Process is something that you can't have all your eggs in one basket. You can't say, I can go to Alabama, and you're not that Alabama player, you know, because they have people that they're looking at, and they have a certain statue, a certain look that they're looking for, you know. Yeah. And, and, and you see it every year. Kids have, I got 25 offers, 
and on signing day, you are preferred walk on. You know, yeah. and that, that's 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 not fair to say, but college is college to me. And yeah. If I can get you to the next level, my my job is done. My yeah. job is to get you there. Now, yeah. what they do with you after the, you leave me, I can't really tell you how you're gonna take that on. Yeah. Okay. I'll, uh, not not to not to get away from the subject since we're talking about recruiting and college choices. I know you've and I know you you're you've been in the in regards to watching the news. Uh, there's a number one recruit that's coming out of high school, going to college soon. Hasn't made a choice, or he has. He's up to make his decision on where he's going. Name is Mikey, and um, decided that he he tweeted something saying that he's interested in going to you know open his options to HBCU. What do you think about that? Uh, knowing that he's probably can go anywhere in the country. I, I think it's a decision that this kid can make changes for other kids. Yeah, and I think it's something that you really look at. If you are, are planning on being a football player at any level, if you look at it, they have more HBCU players in the National Football League than probably, you know, a lot of small schools yeah. are, are getting recruited a lot more because the talent level, because they get missed on the SAT or they get missed on their test scores are something that is not, you know, a lot of people don't understand. You gotta have your your criteria straight, straight, and you gotta you gotta understand the part of being recruited. You can be the best player in America, but if you can't, if you don't have the grades, or you haven't haven't done your uh, your 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 due diligence as far as knowing how to talk to the NCAA and have those that paperwork done, yeah, they can't touch you. Yeah, and I think a lot of times with uh players high school players or even college players making their decision on where they go and i think they when you go on a recruiting visit and you're meeting the coaches these are questions that you should ask but i think there's a lot of parents who are uninformed because they have they don't know this is like a whole nother language if you understand what i'm saying you know that process may have been a little bit easier for your son while you're up there with him because he had you go through it but there's other parents who don't even know the terminology SAT, ACT, what is the breakdown? What is the NCAA? You know, what is the criteria? They don't know that. So parents, if you're listening, <laughs> before you decide your kids to go whatever high school, please start asking questions that is relevant to their success, you know? And I think that's truly important if you understand where I'm coming from, DP. It, it, is, it is extremely important. And, and I, I've been around it. I, I, when they let the, the floodgates open of a kid can go to any school he wants in Broward County, Dade County, anywhere. They're not really thinking about these kids. And I, I'll tell, that's the truth and honesty I, I give to every kid. Are you thinking about your kid's education? Are you thinking about, okay, I need a star. I need I need to, to transfer. I, I've never seen a star play yet. You can be a five star and guess what? They got nine of them. They got 25 of them at Alabama. They got 25 at LSU. You're just a member. And, yeah. and, 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 and you got to be able to understand the process of elimination when it comes to uh, being recruited and understanding the questions to ask. Um, you know, am I getting a four-year degree? Am I getting a year-to-year a -year degree? degree? Yeah. So there's a lot of things that I can get into. Yeah, I know. And, and I know we can have a whole discussion on that. <laughs> we got we, we can go all day, you know, and, and I give, I'll give you all the juice I can give you. But yeah, you have to you have to understand that each and every year this recruiter's coming down. He likes you, yes, but as soon as signing day comes, he's liking the next guy at the same position as you. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. If I have any parents that have any questions in regards to the recruiter process, you already know. I, you know, I got to make sure it's okay with that. But I, I'm going to make up. sure I'm going to say, I need to ask you. You need to ask DP before you start making up. decisions. Hit me up. Hit so me up. My, my, next, my next question, as we talk about, you know, I, I'm going from pre-career to in-career to post-career. And I wanted to talk about your seventh year, seven season, uh, seven, seven year career that you had in the NFL. Um, let's talk about what was the biggest impact. You know, who had the biggest impact on your life while playing in the NFL? I, I would have to say my cousins Benny and Brian Blades. You know they were they were in my life from when I was in in middle school. So wow. it was something that 
I was instilled in and understood, you know, if you want to be this person, you got to understand you make decisions. You got to be able to stick with your decision. You make mistakes. Everybody makes mistakes. Are you able to come back from a mistake in life and be a positive influence on, on other people? And that's my goal. I, I try, my goal in life is to, to, to instill on young kids and make them understand, listen, if you're going to make a decision, you got to understand that that decision is going to stick with you probably the rest of your life. But I don't, you got to be able to understand that part of your life. You got to go through it. You can't yeah. go around it. Once you made that decision, you got you got to go through it. Yeah. And, and it's going it's going to be, you know, I, I had this conversation uh, with my own son, you know, you're going to be here. I can't play for you. Yeah. If you don't love this game, you're going to figure out why you made this decision. And you're gonna to stick to it because my mom did it to me. Yeah. Like that, when I told you about uh, Coach Coughlin saying, "Well, I'm not gonna play running back." I was one of those kids. Well, I don't want to be here. I called my mom. Guess what? She hung the phone up on me. And where am I going? I'm in Boston College. I'm in Boston. How I'm getting home? You made the decision. You stick with it. Yeah. And you know what? And I, I really feel if parents were to really help kids learn to stick with their decision that they made. You made the decision, we're gonna, you need to figure out how you're gonna maneuver through this, this decision that you've made. We won't see so many kids in the, in the transfer portal every year because if they, they don't like the way the coach talked to them, DP, they decide they wanna go to another school the next year. Every year they transfer. Like, what does it look like to me that every time I see your, your uh, transcript, you have transferred to four different institutions, four different high schools. That lets me know that you're not able to, to face adversity. That's one, because everybody can't be wrong. Everybody can't be pointing fingers at you. And that you said a big thing there. The transfer portal, portal, the numbers of people ever getting back into college is very slim. And the only people that's really moving in the transfer portal, if you look at it, go and look at it, are quarterbacks. Now, all the rest of the positions, they're not getting picked up. So my analogy that I use to a lot of kids, and, and, and you know, it, I talk my, my the young kids as young men. You need to go get a job at Dick's Sporting Goods. They're always hiring. Because once you leave a college that is paying for you, or giving you half partial, the best time of your life, you need to go get a job. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. I know we, we went on a, on a run just now. Rant just now is just about college and recruiting. Hey, man, we can go. We can go. I got time. We can go. <laughs> but wanted to get back to, to your career, you know, that you played in the NFL. Now, I ask this question to everybody that's on the show because everybody has different perceptions on their experiences and what they went through and what they felt they could have done different. While you were playing in the NFL, were there some things that you felt that you may have could have could have done different in your career that would have just been different or help you evolve or been a different type of player? Um, I think things that I could have done different, I could have done more as far as understanding that the NFL means not for long, okay? So you have to be able to understand that part of being in that business. The average years is three years in three games okay in order for you to have a pension in the nfl so a lot of guys don't understand to make it three years in that business is far in between yeah and a lot of guys really don't understand when i tell you it's not how good you are after those three years it becomes a money situation it becomes a financial situation it becomes it's a business yeah and a lot of people will probably agree with me that, you know, if you know you're in a good situation, it's kind of like the transfer portal. Stay at where you are, take less money. But the way the NFL is now, it's slotted. You're, you're yeah. going to make 30% of what the person did the year before, 30% yeah. more than the person did before you. So uh, what, things what that you are kind of different is, 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 I guess – First, say study more. Yeah. Take care of your body. Um, when I say take care of your body, there, there's days when after when I get out of my fifth and sixth year, it was it was body was sore. 
you know, and you have to you have to get in ice tubs twice a day. You got to get rest. You know, at those ages, you've ran into a lot of br brick walls. Yeah. Now, and I, I like the information that you're giving here. My question to you, do you feel that at the college level, and it may be college or maybe high school, but probably primarily college, where there should be uh, maybe a symposium or something like that, and they may have it. I may not be uh, privileged to know the information. Do they have where they talk to these student athletes about the business aspects of the league, like the business aspects of college football and the business aspects of, of the, of the NFL? Because I think if players know the business aspect of it, and I know you never really know it until you get into it, you never know the true never, experience. Because I'm know. living on the outside of it. I never could know your experience because you actually went through the experience. But uh, to prepare our young men for those who are planning on going that route, is there any way that we can be able to give them tools that would help them to educate them more about the business of the NFL? I, I think as far as being alumni of, of a college or a high school, if we had more mentors as far as even having weekly public talks with the kids. Um, I did go to a symposium. I got drafted by the Pittsburgh Steelers. So I was able to do the symposium part and uh, get in the car with your boys, hang out, or meet a young lady, and she looks good. And the lady at the symposium was beautiful. Guess what? She had AIDS. They didn't tell you that until the end of the symposium. So wow. That, that's wow. just a little story that I, I got from when I went to the symposium. And God bless the dead, Walter, Walter Payton was our speaker for, for the symposium. So it, it, it's a lot of different avenues that you can take with it because we did, we did do financial. We did do, we did do um, uh, nightclubs and understanding when you're out. Uh, the best, best thing, and, 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 and I remember this quote, Harm Edwards, only thing open after 2 o'clock in the morning is is his legs and in the hospital, and nothing good coming out of that. Nothing good coming out of that. And nothing good yeah. coming out of that. <laughs> and so, and it's so true, but it's so hard teaching or letting these young men know that because they want to go and experience it on their own. Un you got until you, they. <laughs> everybody won't jump in the deep water and don't have don't know know how to hold their breath that long. Yeah. Well, I mean, thank thank God for this show. You know, talking about life after sports, so that we could be able to teach them give them some gems so hopefully they'll listen and not make those mistakes so uh for all of you that are listening and paying attention um let's go into my next question uh talking about during your career when did you start to think uh about life after sports uh at some point in your career when did you know that hey this may be the this may be my last season or this may be my last snap i'm not sure but i'm thinking about what life what my life is going to be after sports well i i was always into how this was going to end. Was it going to end an in injury or was it going to be, okay, I just, you know, I'm not good enough or, and it, it's, it's, it's politics to a point to say politics, but I could have played another three years, honestly, but it was more of knowing how this business works. Okay. If you're going to bring in me as a safety and move me to corner, I ain't played corner since college. So, you know, this is this is the part of the game that they play. And it's got to be mental that you, you can do it. But the numbers game, as far as being a DB, there's only nine of us or ten of us that can dress out a game. Uh, seven, actually. But, you know, there's only 11 in our group. So knowing that part of it, I and when I was in Detroit, I was kind of spoiled to, to be around a guy named Barry Sanders and watch him run a sports bar, a uh, restaurant. And that, that became one of my goals to get into that business. And that's why my page is called Porter's Place. I owned a sports bar for seven years and came home and, 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 and started my own business and, and did fairly well. It was seven years doing that. You know, then I got into coaching. So that was something that was tough. But on, on the other hand, it was it was more of something that you, you got to be able to, to grind. When I say yeah. grind, because it looks good, it looks great, you see cheers, everybody know your name, and you think you can have the same sports bar, and, you know, you got to build that. Yeah, yeah. 
Um, <laughs> I mean, how did you? And I and I hear what you're saying. You you looked at somebody else that you that had a sports bar, and you're like, man, that's something that I want to do. How did that all come about? And I, where was your sports bar located? Because I'm thinking that I probably went there when I in my younger days. So when. <laughs> It, it, it was actually in Sunrise and uh, 44th Street down in, in Fort Lauderdale. Okay. It was called Porter's Place. It was built just like uh, Bennigan's. I was compared to the L House, but it was black owned. You know, yeah. I, was I was the first black owned uh, sports bar wow. venue that started down here, and it was it was it was built from uh, having happy hours to a Thursday night where it was, you know, the colleges come in town, Thanksgiving weekend, and then Sunday football. Sunday football was, I had, what, 38 televisions in there. You get to watch your own games. Uh, wow. And, it, you know, it was, I had PlayStation, turn, you got to try everything. I had a crab yeah. night, you know, <laughs> Monday night football. You, you got to try the karaoke. I had like, a country bar, you know, I, yeah. I went, I went through everything that you could do and you know so happened it came about where you couldn't smoke in venues anymore so it went from having the crowd of cheers yeah. people that come every day will have their drinks before they get to sit in their seat you know their name it, you know it, it started off that way but they stopped the restaurants from smoking uh in, in restaurants so that's one of the reasons i got out of the business business yeah and it was something that you know, it was going well. Then they they sold the plaza. I'm yeah. gonna, I gotta get out. Yep. Well, I mean, look. You, at least you knew you knew when you knew the right time to be like, okay, I'm ready. I'm done. Let's pack it up. And restaurants, people don't know, restaurants is the hardest business. It's the hardest business yes. in regards to seeing a return on investment right away because it takes time. Then it takes the, the franchising it and then putting it in different places to get different a different demographic of people. So, um, talking about that, how did I want to know how you got into coaching. And I know you've done it for many years, but I want to know how did you get into to coaching before you even got to American Heritage? I, I, I basically went down and I was going out and I saw at the same time I, saw I would go out, you know, I, I was sitting around after I, I got out of the bar business and I went to practice a couple of times and my head coach, which was, George Smith, which is the AD, he's still there over 40 years, and he's a guy that was my mentor. And, hey, look, I'm, I'm around you guys. Why don't I just, you know, put my hands on it and, and, and give you the wisdom? I played running back. I started as a running backs coach there and, and, and coached some good ones, like I told you. Uh, James White, Giovanni Bernard, guys of the sort, you know, those guys are still all in the league. LaMarcus Joyner, he's still in the league. Uh, you know, that, that team there, that was a national championship team. And we, we basically, it was just being around the kids and, and being able to, to give back. And, and that, that's how I got into it. And yeah. I never stopped after that. Yeah. And before I even get to ask you, what, you know, what do you feel that your purpose in life is? Before I ask you that question, if anybody who's been to an American Heritage game, this is a PSA. I ain't even talk. I'm not talking to DP right now. I'm talking to everybody else paying attention. If you have been, if you haven't been to a American Heritage football game and you sit in the stands and you don't hear DP screaming at the top of his lungs upstairs, then you haven't been to his game. You haven't heard him. So with that, you you I understand your passion for the game because I've been in I've been in the seat. I've been sitting right there watching you and watching Pat as well as he's coaching and, and the whole coaching staff and. What would you describe as what is your what's your purpose in life if you had to put it in a nutshell? I, I, I said it once before, and, I, and I, my purpose for doing this is is to help these kids go in the right direction, understand adversity, understand that life is short, life is 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 hard to be in, especially at the time of what we've got going on now, and I I really would like to be able to to say, you know what, I, I get a I get a kick out of saying, oh I coached him. Oh I coached him. I don't want nothing. I want you guys to understand and, and the kids to understand that you are playing something that you've played from however 
age you are now, and you're only going to play it for so long. Yeah. So you got to be able to enjoy it, take it in, learn to be coached, learn to understand that everybody's not going to pat you on the back and, and push you to do things because we really are getting you ready for the next level at American Heritage. Our coaching staff has been around each other for a long time. And we, we, you know, when they, when Coach Pat got into it, Coach Aronde, Earl Little, you know, we, we got, we got a lot of guys that a lot of knowledge on the football field every Friday night. Yeah. Well, you know, talking about knowledge and, and learning and your experience, um, as both of us as men on here, we've been through different things in our life, you know, uh, the highs, the lows, learning to cope with that. And I think, this generation is a little bit different <laughs> when it comes to learning from their mistakes. Cause that's what our theme is tonight. Talk about learning, how, to, how learning from your mistakes can be able to empower you to help others. And I, and I can speak for myself, you know, through my coaching, I've coached for 10 years and I've, you know, I've gotten fired from a job. I've gotten fired from coaching maybe twice out of my three different institutions. Just, it's just the nature of the business. If you don't do what you, what they're asking you to do, and they give you a time frame, three years, five years, whatever that is, a one year, and it's not being done correctly, ADs or athletic directors decide to move on. And so I, I, I really feel that student athletes don't understand that, yeah, it's, it's fun to go out there and play. We want you to enjoy it. But at the end of the day, it's also a business because I'm doing this because I truly enjoy it or it's a passion of mine. And I'm trying to – I'm trying to – help you get to the next level. And it may not just only be in playing football, basketball, whatever sport, but I want you to be able to learn from your mistakes in whatever you're doing so that you can be able to catapult to that next level in life. And so um, if you had any experiences that you want to share with our viewers in regards to learning from mistakes and being able to empower others, do you have any of those? As, as far as mistakes in life, like I said, everybody makes mistakes. You got to get through them. Uh, sometimes you make mistakes and you don't even know you made a mistake. So there's things in life that we, we, as young men, as men, there's decisions that you put yourself in. You got to be able to stick with those decisions and understand that you made that decision. Yeah. <laughs> if yeah. you make that decision, you got to stick with it. And I, I keep this, very very simple because it came from my mom i made them I, I made i made a decision to go to college in boston so once you make a decision you got to be able to make that decision and understand that i'm gonna stick with it i'm gonna stick it out and that's the way it's gonna go yeah 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 no you're right you're right i mean i i pay attention to your your instagram and you are always you are always putting positive positive reinforcement on there if anybody if you're not if you don't pay attention you look at his instagram he posts on his instagram on his ig snap every day something motivational something that is inspiring something that causes you to really open up your eyes and really take a, a self-assessment of your life what am i doing to help and inspire and impact others and i think that is that is important uh for for, for just for people just to understand that we're here to be able to help others. It's not always about me, 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 but how can we be able to impact and be able to advance the youth or advance other people that's around us in our circle. And so uh, when, I, when I get around you, DP, it's all about energy. <laughs> you know, it's energy. But listen, I, I think the kids, they, they kind of understand. I can't have positive vibes on you. If I, I, I tell them, listen, I don't sleep very much. I'm up. When I say I'm up, I'm up probably 4 o'clock in the morning every day. And I see them by 7, 30, 8 o'clock, and they, I still got energy, you know. So it's, 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 I know life is short. And when you have some, some knowledge to give people or, or some, some vibes to give out, give it to them. Because you never, never know when you can't tell these kids, you be like, God, I should have told. Them. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 ain't, I ain't gonna do that. I don't want. I don't want to hold anything in, because it can be. It can be. 
what, what is what is my life going to be, Coach? What do you see me being? You might not be the best player, but I see something else in you. You might be a lawyer. Hello? Yeah, I can hear you. I said, learn to understand that you, you, when, you're, when you're at school, don't hang out with the guys from football. Go hang out with the guy in your class from a different race. Learn to be able to talk in front of people. Learn to, when you're talking to people, they want to know if you're able to, 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 to be in a big crowd or, or be able to do public speak, speaking. Ah, that, you know, that was a class I had at Boston College, 350 people. You got to get up and talk in front of them. You think I knew what I was doing? No. <laughs> you got to do it. You, my hands are sweating. My yeah. head's sweating. I don't know what. This teacher told me I got I to gotta do a, a, a whole dissertation in front of – I'm a sociology major, so I got I to do this, this, this paper in front of them. I got to be able to recite it. Did I, did I come there and do that? No. I learned. Yeah. Yeah. No. And and that's the reason. Can you you can hear me now? Hello? I can hear you. Okay, perfect. I I don't know the reception is just going on and on 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 here, but yeah, no, those you. are those are some positive gems that you were saying. Like just just people just being able to self-assess and learn and and be able to be uncomfortable. I think a lot of times we it's so easy to look for your comfort zone. And uh, when you're able to get out of your comfort zone and be uncomfortable, that's where you can start to see progress and you can see growth. Mm. But yeah, no, I want to say, is there anything last or one advice that you want to give out before we, we, we come to a close? I mean, I appreciate you taking your time. But do you have if you have one more thing to say or advice that you would like to share with anyone or or give, would you do you have one got going on right now? Uh, we can't think we're going to go from phase one. Phase one looks like phase five to me. And I think we, we need to. Uh, yeah, I got you now. Go ahead. I, I said one of the things, my last piece, I, I think we got to understand this is this situation that we're in with the coronavirus. That I think we're, 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 we're not taking this. I'm not saying we, but people aren't taking it as seriously as they should because this thing is really taking people's lives. And yeah. I think our phase one, I think you want to jump to phase five. So I don't, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and it, it, one thing I say is we got to learn how to be cleansed and, and stay out of people's face, yeah. you know, because we're, we're going to, we're going to hit another wave is what they're saying. The flu yeah. season is coming. And I, and I, Yep, and I see it coming as well because people are not paying attention, people are not listening, and people are just doing everything opposite than what they're supposed to be doing. Yeah. So for those of you who are listening, please heed to the instructions. Please stay safe. Please stay away from not being socially distant. Please be socially distanced from people, please. <laughs> it's yeah, serious out there. That's all I got. I, don't, I yeah. can only tell you so much because... It's people doing whatever they want to do. Yeah. No, you're right. You're right. But like I said, man, I appreciate you coming on here. I know that you, you're you up there with your son. And uh, just to get you to get on here for a couple minutes, man, I really appreciate it. For those who, who just chimed in, this was Life After Sports Podcast. And we had our special guest, Daryl Porter. And I appreciate him coming up on here and sharing his gems and talking about his life experiences and being able to talk about his coaching, ex uh, coaching experience as well. And uh, thank you again for coming on the show, episode eight. Till next time. <laughs> I see you, Appreciate big it, BP. For sure. All right.